correlation there. Now, a couple of the blog posts that I did write on Sandy Hook, I submitted to uh, Michelle Shazudovsky up at uh, Global Research, uh, globalresearch.ca, and he he ran those and. And um, this was like within a couple of weeks of the event having taken place. And I was just asking questions about, say, H. Wayne Carver, the Connecticut medical examiner who presided over these autopsies, why was he laughing and guffawing through the press conference that he had on December 15th? It didn't make any sense. So, so I transcribed the press conference, and I, as I was transcribing it, it, it seemed more and more ridiculous the fact that he's laughing at the deaths of these children and the autopsies. So I wrote that um, and published that as a piece, I think on December 24th of, of 2012, and then submitted it to uh, Global Research. And from there it went all over, it went all over the world. And I think that, I, I can only surmise that um, the powers that be, if you will, um, uh, prompted the Sun Sentinel to contact me and to get me to go on the record so they might be able to use me in a, as an example. This is something that should not be commented on uh, because there was an understanding at that time that this was getting a lot of play internationally. This global research goes all over, not just in the United States. And I think that I was really just basing my um, study to a large degree on research that had already been done. Uh, there, researchers doing stuff and publishing it on YouTube and on their own blogs and and we're doing great stuff far outpacing the mainstream press uh, and this was just within a couple of weeks of the event and but I was uh, on the inside if you will and I've often thought of my situation as being something of a whistleblower in a way uh, because this is verboten this is not something that you can discuss as an academic, as quote unquote conspiracy theory, you know. And I've, I think that um, once I got tenure in 2008 and began talking about things like 9-11 or broaching those topics on Facebook, my, um, you know, leftist academic friends, my progressive left friends, uh, in some cases would really come down on me and, and, and with this sort of um, boilerplate language like, well, the conspiracists say this, but of course we can't believe that. That's not true. It's so formulaic and um, un dishonest, really. And um, I think that kind of planted a seed that I, um, I, I disliked the hypocrisy within my own ranks. Uh, we thought of ourselves and, and think of ourselves as being um, as seekers of truth, uh, I was uh, involved in some organizations and I think identified as a, as a uh, kind of leftist professor myself, and yet the left has this, this sort of mental block, and I'm not sure if it's willful, if it's something that's a put on or what, with regard to these deep events. So they, in effect, become de facto guardians and defenders of the official storylines, uh, which itself, I believe, is, is very dishonest. And they're doing it at least with the partial knowledge that it is not truthful. What they are doing is, um, I think, in service of the state.